So in this video, we're going to do a part two. Having recorded a sketching collaboration with Mary McIntyre last week, we then went through her sketchbook and discussed the most amazing drawings and techniques. And we then went out to the garden and saw her set up the observatory, meteor camera and outside pier. And again, we met Evie the cat, who once again gate crashed the recording. So right on to part two with Mary McIntyre. Oh, and chuck us a like and subscribe so you don't miss more videos as we explore the night sky. My first sketches are in my oh, observing books. That's Plato. Goodness no, me. No, it's not. Um, I thought it was. Somebody sent me the picture and told me it was Plato. It's actually think? Archimedes. Archimedes, isn't it? Yes. But I've redone it. Because you've got the mountains, haven't you, for, the, yeah. for Plato? The guy that did it thought he'd photographed Plato and Look I your didn't son know spots. Well enough. Doesn't look like that now, does it? Although it's coming Actually, back it now. It's week. coming back, hasn't it? I still haven't managed to image it. So that was it done properly. Okay. This was the first time that I tried to do calculations to calculate the height oh, of did you? the bit of the crater wall that cast these shadows. So was that um, uh, two separate times, is it? Two those? separate times. It wasn't my photographs I worked from. They were just mobile phone pictures taken up at an eyepiece. They were really bad photos, but seeing how the shadows had changed in two hours was really interesting. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Because you normally think of the moon being relatively stuck, at, you know, taking a month to change. But when you've got this early terminator... Yeah, it's and amazing. And it change how down how here as well. Change. It's why if I spend three hours on a moon sketch, the terminator's going to have changed. Ah, in the now that looks rather familiar. Is that, yes, that is that that's one, isn't it? the original. It's so have you got Harold Hill's book, The Portfolio of Lunar Drawings? I haven't. You'll, I you'll need be, it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It is the most amazing. I mean, one. Harold Hill. I'll write that down. I mean, it's, it's the late Harold Hill. I haven't. That was um, attempting to see what the inside of the crater would look like, just the sky, just not to scale, just looking at the... The horizon. for a talk that I did, but looking... That looks like your... Uh, at the if you were stood in the middle of Archimedes looking that way, what would the skyline look like? And wow. If you were looking the other way, what would the skyline look like? So it's just... Um, you really have caught that sort of relief. You know, it's a proper landscape picture, isn't it? It's, like, I, it's a, a kind of activity that I try and get kids to think about when I do the sketching. Because oh, you look can learn at that. <laughs> I mean, these do look at first glance. If I ask photograph, oh, no, it's not a photograph. Yes, yeah, so people good. say, oh, it's a, an over, we've put a Photoshop filter on uh, a picture. So, Howard Hill, Portfolio of Lunar Drawings. Oh, Neowise, that was good fun, wasn't it? Oh, wasn't it? It was phenomenal. As soon as I found out it was in the northern sky, I was like, please let me get Noctilucent Clouds as well. Yeah, but it's a 2.30 alarm clock there, wasn't it? That was a bit I horrific. didn't even go to bed. I just I was up at the top of the hill all night. <laughs> it was so cool. Mark came back and went to bed, but um, I stayed up. So well, I that's had, a place to, I had the to learn to draw in pencil when I had to switch to doing sketching on Zoom because people don't have black paper. I take all the materials ah. with me if I do it in person. And I had never sketched the moon in pencil really, so I had to kind of teach myself again how to sketch that way so I could Goodness teach me. it. That was attempt at doing a, an inverted thing so that when I inverted that it would look like the real thing, but it didn't Goodness quite me. work. But These are amazing. I'm going to have to practice some more. Nice that, sunspot. That was a bad day. <laughs> I kept it in there because it was part of my sketch. Is that the sketch of it in the cloud, is it? It was a moon, a moon in the cloud. And that, the picture did look like that, but the, it didn't really work. It's the owl cluster. I love that little cluster. Oh, the little stick man cluster. Yes, I do. Sinus Iridium. I love Sinus Iridium. Yeah, I like Sinus Iridium. It's one of my favourite places. I like Rupees Rector as well. Yeah. But you get this, um, like this... You can't really see it unless the terminator is just right, but it, it's in an impact basin, isn't it? It's very, it is, yeah. yeah. It's really hard when you're doing it from a photograph to know where to stop because you can just keep going until you fill the page <laughs> and it would just take hours. So I still really be... love doing these sorts of IP sketches as well. and They're very different, oh, but I, I do like them. Mars, yeah, we like your planetary sketch. I do sometimes because I love doing the lunar and planetary imaging because, of course, it you know you're really down at fine resolution, and when it all comes together, it does. But there is something quite nostalgic about a pencil sketch. Yeah, that you... was a really bright halo that I saw yeah. that morning, so I had to sketch that. <laughs> I love atmospheric Goodness me! Oh, what's this? Remote Guy Lusak. 
remake Gay Lussac, that Gay was Lussac. a bitch to do, honestly. That <laughs> took me three days. I three had to keep days? stopping it and coming back to it. It's for a book. You know, do you know Brian Jones, the guy that always oh, yeah, posted yeah, the on writer. this day, such a body was yeah. born? He's working on a book at the moment and he's asked if he can use some of my sketches and he's also asked for me to draw certain things for the book and that was one of them. <laughs> Particularly one of the things he's had me doing is pick um, photographs that are taken around like near the edges of the moon they've got a distorted effect they're foreshortened or squished and he's asked me to f do sketches of them that because all the uh, a lot of the lro pictures are taken with a high sun angle that's right so you yes. don't get the relief correct so he's wanted me to merge having like oh, a what? photograph that is taken with a good shadow on it but merge it with one of the LRO pictures to just get rid of the distortion ah. that's been really hard it's it's been a bit of a process to learn how to do Tweedle that. Tweedledum cluster? Yeah it actually took me ages to see the shape of that but I kind of got it in the end because Tweedledum had a rattle didn't he and I think that's a head and a body and this is a rattle out oh, in I his see. hand I'll take, so I think take your I word for it what was that I, word you say when you see patterns is that you have paradonia par yeah I mean I don't think it looks anything like anything <laughs> but I was studying it for ages thinking what are they seeing and suddenly my brain was oh. like hang on that's an arm that's his rattle Tweedledum and spoiled Tweedledee had spoiled his nice new rattle so I guess that's why it's called oh that. I see they all have different names depending which catalogue you look at. So that's called something else as well. Um, I find everything's called a pinwheel. Oh, look at your ISS. I love getting ISS transits. Great fun. Goodness me. I could spend hours looking at this. It's wonderful. Yeah, the spectra was a little bit uh, of something new to do. Where Mark does the spectroscopy. Who does he? So. I found the spectra of, um, was it Nova Cass and yeah. also um, Nova Hercules that went off earlier in the year. So I did the so spectra you, of them. Can you see the black lines? The absorption lines? No, you, um, not with the star analyzer. Is that you what you're using? Yeah. yeah okay. But you, you do get the, the colour bands and you can see where there These are bits. big peaks. Yeah. yeah. And it's really interesting seeing how they change over time as well, um, because as the Nova, because they usually dwarf Novi or whatever, they'll kind of flare up and then dissipate, and you get different kind of spectral lines appearing Goodness at different me. points. So, it's, as it goes through that evolution through the yeah, depending on what kind of Nova it is. There's, so, um, there's something else that's gone off at the moment actually. BAA sent out an alert this morning. Oh, have they? It's, is it a dwarf Nova? There's something weird going on anyway. They want in follow-up observations. Ah. Do you know, I find that one so hard to draw. I did it in pencil and I didn't think it looked good at all. And this is the one where um, everyone could see all kinds of really weird stuff in it. Was it that one or was it another one that I did? There's one that had this weird kind of cross-hatching design in the edges oh, okay. of it. And they're so hard to draw some of them because they're so complicated and then people see all kinds of you shapes. You've got all this detail down here. This is where I struggle, getting all this fine detail on the crater walls. You obviously... It's, um, it's just finding a method with the pencil that is giving something that alludes to the texture you're seeing yeah. rather than it being like accurate with yeah. every single slump terrace. So sometimes I'll just do dots sometimes i'll do kind of wiggly lines but they're not like these little kind of wiggly tracks they're not necessarily in the right place so but they, it gives the, the artist's impression, impression of, of yeah the texture goodness me this is the one where um people kept seeing faces so these weird cross hatching things were just these scarps in the crater wall and somebody said that's a big grinning face with a checked cravat and i was yeah, like right. what long nose eye cravat no teeth cravat down here i was like okay i it's, didn't see that when i was it, drawing it i think that's more of a picasso wasn't it the yes. um, guernica isn't it yeah, very that's... very strange but he could see well there's your um, dinosaur faces. head that's the tyrannosaurus rex skull that's the long nose and the eye <laughs> but i i do that with when i'm doing it with kids i just say look for patterns because sometimes you'll see the batman symbol yeah. sometimes it might be a lion there, there are shapes within the shadows and 
if you break it down into shapes when you're drawing it, it makes it a lot easier. Gotcha. Yes, when I'm doing star patterns, when I'm sketching the deep sky, you often say, uh, well, I, that's I a... do it with triangles, and then I, everything makes a triangle, so you kind of think, w which bit am I up to again? And uh, you're kind of like... <laughs> well, I always think that one looks like a shotgun, that one looks like a... <laughs> that one's an isosceles, and you end up looking... Don't you, as you put these all together... That's brilliant. Oh, thank you, Mary. That's really useful. Oh, look at that. You want These are, um, I can't bring myself to throw them away. Whenever I do sketching workshops online, I oh, sketch along, and these are just some quick sketches that I've done. I what think. type of paper do you use? Sorry, just you don't printed mind. paper. That's just ordinary paper. If I'm doing it for me, I use proper sketching paper, but these are the ones that are done in like 15 minutes, and they're not that different from the ones that I spend hours on, so it just shows you don't have to spend ages but I've got piles of these over there as well just I can't bring myself to chuck yeah. it away but <laughs> well, it's the same crater over and over and over again because there are some crater photos I've got that are really good for beginners so I draw the same ones over gotcha. and over so I've got 15 sketches of Archimedes now I feel like I could draw that from memory I've done it so many times yeah. well, I suppose if you're if you're a runner you were trained at being a running, and if you're an artist, then you have to practice at being an artist, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it, it gets makes... easier, doesn't it? The first ones you do are always a bit clunky and stilted, but it gets easier the more you do them. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you for your but time. I'll show so... you the observatory before you do. Oh, yeah. And we adapted our observatory roof to roll in either direction as well, so if we have something that's low this oh, way, we... the pitched roof can go back rather than... Ah. I and mean, I can see a meteor camera. We have five meteor cameras. Five meteor cameras. <laughs> So that was the camera that picked up the Winchcombe meteorite. The Winchcombe meteorite. fireball, yeah. So where is that? So that's obviously facing, yes, so Cheltenham yeah. then is over. That, that hedge wasn't as tall then. <laughs> we had a bit of a minor flood, so the observatory floor needs to be redone. Oh, I love this. <gasps> So, yeah, the flood has made the walls a bit wonky as well, but um, once we redo all that, we'll get round to it at some point. But the roof can roll off in either direction. We've got an 8-inch Ritchie Crescion in here, and we tend to use the Altair Hypercam 183 on this scope, and we've got an ASI camera on the guide scope there as well. So it's all computer-controlled. So that's really, really helpful. But we've got tripods as well for doing stuff elsewhere in the garden. And we've got our refractors and the solar telescope under blankets here. So depending on what you want to look at, what do you blankets. want to use? Yeah, I mean, actually visually, I still love my very old Helios telescope that was given to me by a relative. I just love that scope. So Easy to use, isn't it? It is, it's fantastic. We've got a, someone following us. A spotty thing. Would that be, um, oh, it would be the Evie cat. <laughs> Hello, bus. Astro cat. She's usually sort of found on my shoulder or on yeah, lap yes. when I'm on Zoom. <laughs> so do you sit? So you sit at the desk and the, while the telescope's um, operating. Actually, once the roof's open, we patch in and do it all from the dining room. Oh right. So, so you're all um, remotely controlled. Yeah, it's all remote. Where's the suffering and the being out in the cold and the damp? Well, that's why I like to be using my pier because I have to um, line it myself. I like being out in the cold. Yeah, being out under so, that night sky. Yeah, it, it's great having this, but I'm usually doing something elsewhere in the garden if we're imaging in here because I just I like being out in the cold. Oh, <laughs> nice one. Enjoying the owls and seeing it firsthand. Yeah, definitely. So this is fantastic. It's great that we've got this, but this telescope's good for certain things, and I like to use the refractors for other things. So it's good to have the flexibility. We have lots of different Barlow lenses as well, so we can interchange those. Oh, that is awesome! Oh, thank you for showing us around. No problem. So that's what it is. This oh, is my off. pier. <laughs> So that's Mary's peer then. So, and you, why do you have your own peer, Mary? You were saying. Um, Mark and I struggle to collaborate because we work <laughs> in very, very different ways. So if we try to work together, we just start bickering. So he built me my own peer for a quiet life. And then the dustbin's just to keep the rain and the, yeah, the frost it works off. Really well, it keeps the rain out. And there's an EQ5 under there, which is great. And I've got mains power underneath, which is fantastic. Oh, so you got the power? Oh, I see. There, there's a plug on the far side. Gotcha. So, yeah, it works really well. What a beautiful spot. It is. So and it's we... pretty good horizon, say, haven't you? Yes. My first sketches are in my <sighs> observing books. That's Plato. Goodness No, me. it's not. Um, I thought it was. Somebody sent me the picture and told me it was Plato. It's oh, actually think... Archimedes. Archimedes, isn't it? Yes. But I've redone it. Because you've got the mountains, since... haven't you, for, the, yeah. for Plato? The guy that did it thought he'd photographed Plato. Look and I your didn't sunspots. Know that enough. Doesn't look like that now, does it? 
Well, it's coming Actually, back it now. It's week. coming back, hasn't it? I still haven't managed to image it. So that was it done properly. This was the first time that I tried to do calculations to calculate the height oh, of did you? the bit of the crater wall that cast these shadows. So was that um, uh, two separate times, is it? Two those? separate times. It wasn't my photographs I worked from. They were just mobile phone pictures taken up at an eyepiece. They were really bad photos, but seeing how the shadows had changed in two hours was really interesting. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Because you normally think of the moon being relatively stuck, at, you know, taking a month to change. But when you've got this early terminator... It, yeah, it's and amazing. And it change down here as well. Change. It's why if I spend three hours on a moon sketch, the terminator's going to have changed. Ah, in that, that looks rather familiar. Is that, so, yes, that is that one, isn't the it? the original. It's so have you got Harold Hill's book, The Portfolio of Lunar Drawings? I haven't. You'll, I you'll need be, it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It is the most amazing. I mean, one. Harold Hill. I'll write that down. I mean, it's, it's the late Harold Hill. So thank you to Mary for hosting me earlier this month. I've learnt loads and I hope you did too. And since then, I've gone out and bought some black paper and white pencils to help develop my sketching skills. And I've been practising by recreating old observations in this new format. So it just goes to show we never stop learning. So once again, chuck us a like and subscribe. And I look forward to bringing you more videos under the night sky.